Hi everyone, it's Serena. Today's tutorial is for a large twist and pop-up panel card. I know everyone loved the regular twist and pop-up panel card, but I think that you will probably love this one even more. Um, one of my VIP group members, Michelle, and her friend Paula were at a scrapbook retreat, and they came up with measurements for a larger card, and Michelle asked me if I would film a video, so here it is. And I really like this larger size, and I think that you will too. Um, I hope that you'll try this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. If you are in my VIP group, I would love to see the cards that you make with this tutorial. And if you're not in my VIP group, I'd love for you to join as well. Um, as always, I will post PDF instructions in my VIP group. So let's get started. This is the card that we're going to be making today. It is the larger version of the twist pop-up panel card. This is actually a six by six card. It has the same exact function, except it's much larger. And then this is the second card that I made. Um, this again is the same exact version, six by six. I just added a an additional base on the top and I um, slightly um, off-centered it and here's the inside and then on this one I also added a pocket at the bottom so this is the card that I'm going to be showing you in the tutorial today um, so let's get started okay so you're going to need three pieces for your base cardstock or for your card base um, you're going to need one cut at 6 by 12 you're going to need another piece cut at four and a half by 12 and your last piece, which is for your mechanism at four by 10. I do want to tell you that this panel piece, this four and a half by 12, um, most of the time when you buy 12 by 12 cardstock, uh, especially if you buy it at some of your local craft stores, it's going to be a tiny bit larger than 12. So make sure that for your mechanism piece, especially, or I'm sorry, your panel piece, especially that you, um, cut this down to 12. If there's even a tiny little bit that's extra, it'll show at the bottom of your card. So I just want to make sure that you, um, pay attention to that piece. So we're going to start by scoring everything. First, I want you to take your six by 12 piece and you're gonna score right down the center at six, and this is actually gonna be your card base. And then you're going to take your panel piece, which is your four and a half by 12, and you're gonna score at three, you're gonna score at six, and you're gonna score at nine. And then you're going to take your mechanism piece and you're going to score on the three inch side, I'm sorry, on the four inch side at two. And then you're going to rotate it over to the 10 inch side. And this is where you're going to make your pencil marks like we did last time. So your first pencil mark is going to be at three and then your second pencil mark is gonna be at seven. And you're gonna rotate all the way around and make the same pencil marks at three and at seven. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna create your X just like we did last time, line up your pencil marks and create your, um, score your lines. These are the exact same steps that we did last time when we made this card, except it's the um, larger version. Okay, so now we um, have finished with our scoring tool. And so now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to fold on our score lines and we're gonna burnish. So you can go ahead and fold your six by 12 piece in half. And again, this one is your card base. And then you're gonna fold your panel card. And so remember, it's gonna be a valley fold, a mountain fold, and a valley fold. So go ahead and fold this. And on this piece, when you're folding, if for some reason um, 
let's say you forgot to make sure that this piece was exactly 12, this is really where you're gonna be able to see the little bit of overhang. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and fold our mechanism piece exactly like we did before. So you're gonna fold over this way on your long line and then you'll flip it over to the back and now you're gonna fold your diagonals. And make sure that you burnish this one really good um, because this is your little mechanism piece. And then just go ahead and make your little house. And I always like to burnish this down just a little bit also. Okay. So now I want you to go ahead and add your score tape to your little house on the top on both sides, okay? I have added my score tape on both sides and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my card base, this would be our next step, is take your card base and you're going to measure to the middle section of your card, which in this case since it's um, six inches wide, you're going to measure to three and you're going to make a tiny little mark at the three inch. And this is where you're going to put your mechanism exactly like we did last time. Take off your score tape. Then um, this is the way I like to do it. Take off my score tape, then fold this down, burnish it, and then do the same thing on the other side. You could, of course, take off your score tape and stick it down. I just find it to be a little bit easier to line up my mechanism on my mark. Take off my score tape and then put the top piece down. and then burnish. And then you're gonna do that exact same thing to the other side. And then make sure you, make sure you burnish. Okay, so now you have your mechanism in place. So we are going to go ahead and take our ruler again, and we're gonna measure to um, our midsection, which is three, our midpoint, and we're gonna make our little mark right at three so that we can add our panel section. So to add your panel section, remember like last time, you're gonna line this point or this um, score line up right to the center and then you're going to fold it like a gatefold card and then you're going to make your line an X line an X and this is where you're going to add your score tape so that we can go ahead and attach our mechanism so go ahead and add your score tape on both pieces and then we'll get our panel attached Okay, so I have added my score tape in both of my little sections, and now we're gonna go ahead and attach our panel. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and line up this fold, the score line, up with your little three inch mark at the top. And it should perfectly line up with your little lines on the sides and now you're going to take off your score tape and adhere your panel down. burnish and if you have a tiny little bit hanging over that's fine you could cut that off if you want also um, and now you're gonna go ahead and fold your card for the first time so you have to get your mechanism working and there you have it 
that's the larger version of the twist and pop-up panel card and definitely burnish both sides so that you can burnish that mechanism in place since you can get the um, mechanism working but this one seems to be working pretty well already so for the optional pocket, you will need an additional piece of cardstock that measures six and a half by five. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by scoring this piece. Now on my pocket, I did not, on this one, I don't have a pocket coming up here. There's no opening at the top because there's no room because of the panels. So I added the pocket on the side. And so to do that, you're going to score your pocket just like we would um, if you've watched some of my other videos, the way we've made pockets in the past is we're going to go ahead and we're going to score this on the six and a half inch side. You're going to score it at half an inch and then you're going to rotate it over to the five inch side and you're going to score it at four and a half and then you're going to score it at half an inch. So this is going to create your, your pocket. Um, and what you're going to do next is you're going to add your score tape all the way around. Then you're going to miter your edges. And then you're going to fold your um, score lines back and burnish. And then we'll add it to the card. Okay, so I have um, gone ahead and added my score tape. I mitered my corners off. And then I just folded on my score lines and I burnished down. So now we're going to go ahead and add our pocket to our card. And you can add your pocket on the bottom. You can add it on the top. It's completely up to you. Um, if you did add it to the top, you could have an opening to take the... Um, if you added it to the top, you could have an opening to take out your tag this way. Um, completely up to you if you want to do it like that. So now all you're going to do is you're going to take your score tape off. And you're going to attach it to your card base just like this. And this part's going to be a little trickier. Um, it's You're going to want to um, kind of push this down just a tiny bit so that you can see where you're adding your pocket. But make sure that you're careful not to overlap your pocket on top of your mechanism because then your mechanism won't work and your card won't fold. So make sure when you add your pocket that you are really careful in um, when you attach it and where you're attaching it. So go ahead and add your pocket and I will be right back. Okay, so now our pocket is attached. You can see it right here. Um, and if you wanted to add double pockets, you can definitely do that. The one thing I'm gonna caution you on is what you put in your pocket. You could definitely put in a tag or some money or a gift card or any of those um, thinner kind of things. I don't know if you could put in a packet of cocoa. I don't have any here at home, otherwise I would have tried to see if it would have fit or not. But you have to remember the bulkier that your packet or your pocket gets, that the harder it's gonna be for your mechanism to close because it's sliding against the bottom right here. Um, but if you add anything like a cocoa, po a cocoa packet or anything a little bulkier and it works really well, please feel free to let me know. Um, I definitely wanna see what that looks like. And that is our completed larger twist and pop-up panel card.